You're watching Theme Park Worldwide. Right today I'm here at SeaWorld Orlando on a beautiful day. It is a little bit chilly though, hence why I've got my hoodie on. And I'm going to be getting on all of my favourite rides here at the park. And also sharing lots of updates. Because yes, even though I was last here only in November, there's been lots happened throughout the park. If you haven't already, check out the previous vlog to this one where I rode the brand new roller coaster here, Icebreaker. And yeah, I really enjoyed it and shared lots of on-ride POVs and of course rider cam on there as well so yeah so you can see exactly what icebreaker is like so yes in this vlog gonna go around the rest of the park get on the other roller coasters uh, we've got mako an absolutely awesome 200 foot tall bnm hyper coaster kraken has been completely repainted since it was last here so i'm looking forward to that obviously when i was here in november manta was closed for its repaint so i'll get back on manta the flying coaster along with that they've also started construction on another new roller coaster so I'll talk more about that later in the vlog. And finally, over at Journey to Atlantis, they're currently doing a retrack of the ride. So there's so much going on, lots to cover today in this vlog. Parks open through until 10 p.m. this evening. So yeah, gonna get some rides in the beautiful sunshine and then later on tonight as well. But yeah, I think it's gonna get quite chilly tonight. It's a pretty cold day here in Orlando. Uh, cold for the locals, I think it's quite nice. It's about 18 degrees today, uh, which I think is really nice for getting on some rides. So come and join me, we'll start over at Mako here at SeaWorld Orlando and of course we'll have lots of on-ride POVs coming up too. The skyline of this park now is really impressive of course with the huge lake down here in the middle and looking over there is the awesome B&M coasters Kraken with its new colour scheme over there yeah it's green now I love the look of that and of course right here coming over the water it's Mako oh I love this hyper coaster so much a brilliant ride, one of my favourite coasters in Florida. So yeah, let's walk round and let's go and get on. <laughs> 15 minute wait for Mako, not bad at all for a Sunday. And yeah, of course, much like Busch Gardens, owned by the same company, you do need to use the paid lockers. They are just over here on the left-hand side. You find with smaller items, you don't go through any metal detectors. However, any bags do need to be put in the lockers. And yeah, again, it's $10 for an all-day movable locker. Right, let's go on. Well, I've waited 15 minutes and it's a back row ride. Love the audio, and of course the screen at the top there. Pretty good operations on here. Here comes the train, oh, I love a good hyper. But yeah, so they put the screen up there. Obviously, as soon as the train stops just here, it resets, and it comes up with the dispatches per hour. There we go, how long the train's been parked in the station. So it starts counting up now. And then, yeah, all of the trains are unlocked. And of course, they go green when you pull them down. Yeah, really cool little thing, that is. Let's get them right. Let's ride! So it was parked in the station for 94 seconds. It's over a minute and a half, and wow! There we go, my first view of Kraken with the repaint. Look at that. Oh, wow. That looks stunning. <laughs> I mean, photos do not do that justice. That is gorgeous. See, of course, the supports, same color as Mako with a green track. That is spectacular. Oh, wow. I believe they've just finished doing one of the trains into the new color scheme as well. So I look forward to seeing that. Here we go. So yeah, this is 200 foot tall. A brilliant coaster, this. It's Mako, and we're on the back row. Woo! Oh, yeah! Woo! Oh, I love it! Woo! You gotta love a good clamshell restraint. So much. Woo! Woo! Yep. Woo! Great camel back that. Woo! Woo! -woo. Can't believe Kraken. Look at that colour. Wow. to the ride over the water. Woo! Hey. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's 
Maker, an absolute beauty. Oh, I love that so much. And cracking operations, two trains in service. I'm just shocked at the color scheme. That looks amazing, that does. Oh, I cannot wait. I think we'll head around there next. All my footage there from the back row of Mako, an absolutely spectacular roller coaster here at SeaWorld Orlando. I love a good hyper, and the fact it's only 200 feet, you get so much out of that ride, which is fantastic. The first drop, the turnarounds, lots of floater airtime. Shame about the trim break, but you know what? It doesn't spoil the ride. It is a fantastic attraction, and only 200 feet, it gets so much in the layouts. I still wish that that's what we were seeing from Thorpe Park with their new coaster. Uh, I still think, you know, something like that, even at 200 would have been fantastic um, but still it is what it is but yeah I do love a good B&M hyper coaster absolutely spectacular and I'll take you on there again later on do a bit of rider cam on there shall we as well so you can see my reactions to all that floater airtime anyway I just walk around the corner now it's only about a five minute gentle stroll round here to Kraken and I can't believe how good it looks yeah I've seen photos but obviously I went around that way uh, to get to Mako so yeah I hadn't really seen it up close and I tell you what the colour scheme looks gorgeous Wow, here we go. How awesome does this look with the new colour scheme? And yeah, they've even painted up the entrance here as well, which is great. Now, obviously, we knew that they painted up the queue line, so we had an idea that maybe they were going to do something else. And I tell you what, what they've done looks amazing. This ride is 22 years old, and it looks brand new. It opened back in the year 2000. And yes, of course, they've also removed the unleashed wording from underneath Kraken there. Uh, that was still there back in November, because they did put VR on it for one point. I didn't get to experience that but I'm so glad that kind of phase we were going through with VR uh, died out it has at most parks anyway apart from Europa Park in Germany um, but yeah cracker nice to see all the entrance painted up and yeah the station looks great down there we're going to have a closer look at that shall we as well but yeah it looks absolutely fantastic this does round here all the buildings the details all the paintwork oh yeah I'm a big fan all new signage there as well and yeah, this looks gorgeous. It's got a 40 minute wait. I don't think I've ever waited 40 minutes for Kraken. But yeah, it's great to see people coming down here and getting on these absolutely epic rides. SeaWorld has got some of the best roller coasters in Florida and some of my favorites. I mean, Mako is right up there uh, as an absolutely spectacular ride. But I'll tell you what, Kraken looks gorgeous now with that green track just there. Wow, it looks absolutely epic. I was thinking when I saw photos, it looked good, but blimey, I didn't think it looked anywhere near as good as this. It looks so fresh, it really does. And yeah, with the support color as well, completely different to that kind of turquoise track um, and cream supports that we had before. Yeah, here it comes. Kraken, oh, what a beauty. Gonna be coming just over here for us now. Wow. God, it looks the part, and that's also the new colours on the train, there we go. Oh, it looks great, look at them blue restraints. Oh, it looks beautiful. Right, I'm gonna go and join the line for Cracker. Nice b &M flawless coaster, let's go and ride. Here we go then, so here's a close up look at that awesome new train design on Cracker. Wow, the blue restraints there, looks amazing, doesn't it? I love the effect on the side just here as well. It's absolutely spectacular. The other train is still the old design at the moment. But yeah, gonna be riding on the front row of the new train just here, freshly painted up. It looks absolutely epic. Yeah, wait about 40 minutes, including for a front row. So let's go and ride Kraken.
complete stop at the inside station. Unfasten your seatbelt and wait for instructions from the attendant. Thank you. Fudgy's there from the front row of Kraken, a spectacular flawless coaster, riding really well. And yeah, you've got seven fantastic inversions on there that I absolutely adore. And I tell you what, what they've done with the paintwork on there looks amazing. And that new train style is awesome. I love the blue restraints. It looks brilliant. It's quite weird seeing the old one and then the new one. Uh, yeah, I'm lucky to have seen that because I believe they only just brought that train out of the maintenance shed a couple of days ago. So yeah, I got to see the new design on there and it looks absolutely fantastic. You know what? It is great to see SeaWorld Parks and Resorts spending so much money on their parks with new attractions and of course repaints. You've got to look down at Busch Gardens, all the repaints there too. Of course owned by SeaWorld Parks and Resorts and yeah it's the same here as well. I am really impressed uh, with all the work that's going on throughout their parks. And uh, yes, Journey to Atlantis opened here back in 1998. It's a Mack Rides water coaster and uh, yeah they've been doing some track replacements and well I've just come off Kraken and yeah it's actually testing over here of course I don't think it's going to be opening today or anything uh, with them doing a lot of retract work um, you've got to think they've got to test the ride make sure that everything's right for it um, but yeah it's probably going to open uh, in the next couple of weeks maybe even sooner than that so yeah let's have a little look at the ride it's a beautiful ride journey isn't it and the building is so impressive from afar I'd say it looks even better but even when you get close down here it is still spectacular all the rocks around there as well. I wonder if we're gonna see them do some work on the building itself. Not like it really needs it too much. Maybe a couple of touch-ups in some places. But yeah, I tell you what, I cannot wait to ride it next time I'm here and uh, especially see how it feels on the retract sections. Not like it was really getting rough. Um, but yeah, I know for a fact that a lot of work's been done around the back um, on the twisted drop. So yeah, looking forward to seeing how that is. But yeah, the ride is of course testing. Seems like they've stopped sending boats now. I was waiting for one to come down the uh, big drop just here. Um, yeah, fantastic to see. And you know what? Um, the fact they're doing all this work is brilliant. It really is. I think there's a bright future ahead uh, for SeaWorld Parks. I really do. Uh, kind of moving away from the roots, which is really good to see. And uh, yeah, investing in more rides, attractions, and kind of having rides themed around sea creatures. That's kind of where they're going with SeaWorld now. And you know what? I think it's the best decision for them. Uh, they've got some of the best rides in Florida. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. Hey! Oh, yes. Looking forward to this reopening. The boats look great as well. I think they've been done last time I was here in November. Uh, if you want to see on-ride footage, of course, check out the vlog. But yeah, going to uh, head down now over towards another awesome B&M coaster. Because yes, they've got three B&Ms here. We've got Manta, the flying coaster. And I say three B&Ms, well, it's looking likely that that's going to be changing next year, which is very exciting. And later on, I'll talk a little bit about their future plans because as much as there's no official confirmation, there's some strong rumors about a new coaster and work has already started on clearing the land where it's going to be. So yeah, very, very exciting stuff. I might have to take my hoodie off actually now. It's getting quite warm. Oh, what a lovely day. Beautiful. But yeah, going to head down towards Manta. It was closed when I was here in November. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back on there. I'm not a huge flying coaster fan, but the pretzel loop on here, very intense. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm expecting to wait quite a bit for it. Just get busy. Popular flying coaster. But yeah, look at that building. How amazing is that? I like the dome off to the right. There's a shop in there and also an aquarium as well. But yeah, absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, let's head around this way to another b and Beauty. Oh, it's a gorgeous day to be here at SeaWorld Orlando in the last major vlog from this trip. However, there is going to be two bonus vlogs coming up next week from Fun Spot Orlando and Fun Spot Kissimmee as well. So stay tuned for those. It's a beauty. It's great to see it running again. Be my first ride on here in a while. Over two years since I've been on Manta. B&M Flying Coaster. There's a look at the 98 foot tall pretzel loop. Definitely the most intense part of any coaster in this park that is and yeah this opened back in 2009 Bodger and Mabillard and yeah it's a great ride and of course it has had a repaint as well which looks beautiful yeah that was being done last time I was here so it's nice to see that complete and yeah also as well all the water filled up again out the front because when they were doing the repaint um, obviously that had been drained so they could do it I'm just loving how fresh all of the rides have looked here and at Busch Gardens of course if you haven't already check out the Busch Gardens vlog 
and also um, from riding Ayan Gwazi, the spectacular new RMC hybrid coaster that I really enjoyed. I tell you what though, this is the busiest I've ever seen it here at SeaWorld. Like, it's a very busy day. I'm not complaining, like the, you know, a lot of the rides aren't really getting too busy. A lot of people are here for shows and just walking around and soaking up the atmosphere. There's also a food festival on at the moment, which is of course attracting quite a lot of people down here to the park. Well yeah, let's uh, head round to Manta. Advertised wait, 70 minutes. Oh, the observation tower is open, oh my God. I've not seen that on for years. I didn't even know it had reopened. Oh, that's cool. Got to have a ride on there. Oh, that's a nice little bonus, isn't it? Oh, great to see. Where's all this money coming from? I want to know. Like, they're doing really well. A lot of theme park companies, to be honest, considering we've just kind of coming out of a pandemic, have done, are investing heavily and have done so much, which is great to see. It really is. So, yeah, I'm going to go and join the line for Manta. You've actually got an aquarium as part of the queue line where of course you can see all the rays, which is really cool. I love that. Wow, well, I'll tell you what, there's not many roller coasters that have an aquarium in the queue line. I love this for Manta. Look at this, I'd forgotten just how impressive the queue line aquarium was for this ride. It really is great to see. Beautiful. Whoa! Look at them rays. Oh brilliant. Look at all the fish just swimming around in there. But it's great because you kind of feel like you're getting an attraction before you even get on the ride, which is awesome. I love it. Oh, look at these absolute beasts in here. Wow, here we go. So we've been waiting about 40 minutes so far, just up the steps into the station. We're riding on Manta, flying coaster. Wow, here we go, time to ride on Manta. And of course, there's only one place to ride this, that's at the back, so intense. Or oh, it's the last row, as it says on the sign. Here we go, wait 50 minutes in total. There we go. So it only seems like we used the one station on here now. It's been a long time since I've used the other station over there. Much like Galactica or Air as it used to be known at Alton Towers. Does have the dual station. Yeah, I think it's on two trains, one station. I do like the Zero car though, the Manta Rail there. The announcements are always great at SeaWorld. As the coaster comes to a complete stop. Oh, I love it. Get on back row ride or last row <laughs> here on Manta. And we got a dispatch. Oh, lovely. In that flying position on the back of Manta. Let's go and get some great views from on here. Let's ride. See, as you can see, unlike Galactica Alton Towers, there's no actual floor that lowers down here. You just have the indents in the floor. That's actually a big reason why Galactica or Air, as it used to be known, Alton Towers, just have quite a lot of downtime. That was a big issue with it, the floor. There we go, you got some great views. There's that pretzel off to the left. Right, sorry. <laughs> Can't get my left and right, right there, there we go. Climbing up, look at the view. So you got the Orange County Convention Center over there. That's where IAPA is. Oh boy, here we go. Manta. Woo! Woo! Here's the pretzel. Oh my God. Oh! oh my God, that is so intense. Woo! Whee! Smooth. This is the mid course, my favourite section of the ride now, over the water with the effect. Here we go. Round 
turned into the break room. There we go. Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. 2009, still going strong. I love how audio is a big part of the SeaWorld experience as well. Like the speakers just here on the break room and the same on the lift as well. Great stuff. getting back on Manta here at SeaWorld. It is a fantastic flying coaster. Now, as much as flying coasters aren't normally my sort of thing, they are one of my least favorite roller coaster experiences. This is still one of the best ones, and the pretzel loop just here is ridiculously intense. It really is. Of course, you start the ride with the 140-foot lift hill, where you get some brilliant views, and then, yes, you've also got four inversions built into the ride's layout. I really like the end section. The near miss with the waterfall is really cool, and, of course, the water water effect like an actual manta um, going through the water I love that so much it's a great ride and with the repaint as well it looks absolutely fantastic but yes done the three B&M coasters and like I say this is the busiest I think I've ever seen it here at SeaWorld first came in 2014 I normally come on off peak days and yes yeah, a peak day today and like I say there is like a festival going on as well there's a concert tonight uh, but the good thing is the park is open through until 10 o'clock which means plenty of time to get loads of rides in uh, operations at the park uh, pretty reasonable I'd actually say operations here today are very similar to that of what you might find at Alton Towers or Thorpe Park in terms of the dispatch times. Not as good as Disney and Universal, uh, but just pretty kind of standard operations. Nothing to shout about, uh, but not poor either. Up next then, it's time to talk about something really exciting that could be coming to SeaWorld in 2023. Now, the piece of land that you can see over there isn't home to any rides and attractions. It's actually just next to the car park. That's on the other side of there. Uh, the main entrance off to the right here. And of course, we can see a Manta in that direction. Off to the left here, you've got the stadium seating uh, that they use for events. Now, if you watch the vlog that I did from here in November during the Christmas event at SeaWorld, uh, you'll see that we actually walked through like a little Christmas village uh, with like loads of different stalls and music. Yeah, it was really nice. That was actually over there. Well, in these past couple of months since I've last been in Orlando, all the trees around there, or at least most of them, have been taken away. And as we can see, construction seems to be starting. I mean, you've got some diggers just over there, quite a lot of movement taking place. And yeah, also kind of working on the edge of the lake just there as well. So um, yeah, there's been a lot of rumors and speculation about what's coming. However, uh, we are 99% sure that this is gonna be home to a brand new roller coaster manufactured by Bolliger and Mabillard. But this isn't set to be anything like what B&M have done before, or at least a new generation coaster for them. It seems like Project Penguin, as it's known, could be a new form of stand-up coaster, or what's been labeled as a surf coaster from BNM, which is very, very exciting. Now, you've got to think, um, we know that SeaWorld Parks and Resorts have a brilliant um, kind of relationship with BNM. You've got to look at some of the uh, projects that they've done with them in the past. This park has already got three fantastic B&Ms over there. And uh, yeah, they've all been repainted. They all look great. Uh, you've got to think uh, Mako as well being the newest of the three over there. They've got a great relationship with B&M. So it does seem likely that this information is true. Now, there's also been various different plans and concepts for this ride. It seems like it's gonna be a launched coaster, uh, a new form of stand-up, we believe, and uh, yeah, feature various different inversions and elements. So next time I'm here, this could look very different, but there's certainly work taking place because yes, they've cleared the land over there, and you know what? It would look amazing just here, uh, right on the lake. I mean, you've got to think, we've now got Icebreaker off to the side there, uh, the other coaster's down this side. Um, so yeah, it's kind of spreading out the rise, and with the rapid expansion that SeaWorld parks and resorts seems to be doing at their parks it would really make sense so yes watch this space for project penguin it looks like we're going to be seeing a surf coaster uh, on that site just over there which is very exciting and i cannot wait it'll also be a great ride to see when you're driving up to the park because it's right next to the parking lot brilliant
I love this part of the park around here. All the buildings, it's kind of like a boardwalk style area. Very nice. And yes, at the moment, it's the Seven Seas Food Festival, which sees loads of different extra food options available at the park. And yeah, there's loads of different stalls set up around. I think Disney kind of started this craze with the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. And yeah, we now kind of see um, that replicated in a lot of parks, but it works. You know, it brings in extra revenue streams for the parks as well. Um, yeah, you can see you've got the Caribbean market just over here. Loads of food. And uh, yeah, it is quite an expensive thing to to do obviously as you're all aware you know food isn't really my sort of thing that I come to the parks for however I'm going to try and start showing a bit more for you or at least uh, the options not very adventurous with food Charlotte is a little bit more um, but yeah of course Charlotte's going to be back uh, in the vlogs very soon and uh, yeah really exciting this is actually the last vlog um, like I say from this trip however there's two bonus vlogs coming up uh, because yeah we're back into the UK theme parks and it's weird because uh, tomorrow's vlog on the channel I'm going to be back in the UK at Chessington World of Adventures for the uh, first day yeah it is lovely around here isn't it now the Sky Tower I'm going to find out what's going on because I was chatting with someone just who is a fan of the channel who lives out here and apparently it's not yet open for the public it's been like a staff a training day today or at least the staff preview so yeah, it's not open yet I thought it was done like I never thought it was going to open to be honest I was thinking maybe they were going to convert it into a drop tower because how cool would that have been you might be thinking hang on a minute you can't just convert an observation tower well plenty of places have in the past Liseberg it's in Sweden uh, in Gothenburg they have actually done that and yeah also as well uh, Hyde Park uh, they did it to their drop to their observation tower and converted it. So yeah, it can definitely be done. So yeah, hopefully it comes back in the future. This is by far the busiest I've ever seen SeaWorld. However, I do normally come at off-peak times. And you've got to think it is now spring break. But yeah, I really like uh, just seeing all the crowds here. The atmosphere is great. A lot of the time it feels like, oh, it's so quiet, you know. Uh, whereas with this, it's lovely. I really like the kind of vibes uh, that are going on tonight. Anyway, I am shortly going to be making my way onto a water ride. Yes, Infinity Falls, the rapids down here. I'm uh, going to be having a ride on there because it's quite cool tonight. I'm hoping there's not going to be too much of a wait because some of the queues are getting pretty big now especially um, for the B&M coasters uh, which is great to see I mean Manta's always popular uh, even on the quieter days Manta normally starts a queue uh, but yeah Kraken's really busy and now Mako as well is pretty big too advertised on a 60 minute wait only about two hours ago and yeah I knew it would be a bit cold for those Floridians tonight yeah look at this it's pretty much walk on people are running around for re-rides so yeah sounds good to me yeah they're not even filling the boats up that much here we go Infinity Falls it's not even that cold minute estimated wait time but I think that's more of a walk on to be honest right I'll put a bag in the locker and let's go and have a ride on this awesome rapids yeah this is what I like as a water ride lover brilliant even a quiet day this does also get a bit of a wait literally it is walk on infinity falls let's go in my canoe <laughs> now can you imagine getting in that Charlotte definitely wouldn't come on then oh it's good this it's a shame this effect doesn't work anymore yeah, there used to be like a waterfall coming down here uh, and then of course it would switch off when the boat came just like a bit of a tease or at least it wouldn't fully switch off but you know most of it would right we're getting straight on i hope i'm riding with a group it might be quite funny this here we go i think we're in for a funny ride this one are hey, you ready yeah we got a good boat here we go <laughs> i like it we got a bit of interaction yeah ponchos are on there we go Love it, there you go, I've oh, got the ponchos ready. <laughs> Gonna need them maybe on this, here we go. Woo! Oh! 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 Fantastic! Woo! Whoop! Whoa! Oh! 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 Oh
it's all the non-Americans riding it tonight. We're used to the cold temperatures. Oh my Woo! God, that wave coming in. <laughs> Woo! Brilliant. Oh, it's a drop. Oh, watch out. Oh my God. Oh, look for these moments. I'll have a couple of re-rides on those, I think. Brilliant. Oh God. Cold night here in Orlando, but people are loving it. Woo! Who are we waving at? I'll join in. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I love the structure. So yeah, of course, Drayton Manor last year in Adventure Cove, they redid the rapids and these are the boats, what they've got on there. Same boats, all the sides and everything. So they look a bit fresher in Drayton Manor. As we can see, these are a bit, a bit old now. Right, up the lift here we go. You get quite wet on this lift. Look at all the water leaking off the drop. <laughs> oh, a bit of water leakage. Here we go. Oh, 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 it's cold, man. Oh, infinity balls. Just what I needed tonight. It's a good laugh. Fantastic. Okay, I love the planting up here. So nice is it open this? Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Oh! A sprinkle like that. Oh! Oh, she's gonna get it. Here we go. Oh! Oh, they love it. They keep laughing. Here we go. Oh! Never mind, keep on riding. Just keep on laughing tonight. Oh god. I might say do you wanna go on again? Yay! <laughs> oh, we got a good run down here now. Here's the mega wave. Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh, I am, oh my god! Ah, right, I am absolute. Oh, look at this! Oh, look at my leg! Oh my god! We are dripping in it. Oh, blimey! I was not expecting that there. I've never got my feet that wet. Look at this down here. We're flooded. Oh, God. Oh, we're crazy. We are crazy. I'm, I'm literally sat in flooded water now. Oh, my God. We're going up the lift hill. I'm going to be cold tonight now, but it's worth it. I don't mind. There we go. What a view. Well, I'm wet, so I may as well have another ride. Oh, look at this. I am dripping wet through. Brilliant. Oh, that was good, that was. Thanks for the laughs. Just kept laughing, keep on laughing. Brilliant. Oh. Well, I'm absolutely soaked, especially my jeans and my trainers, but you know what? It was worth it. That was an absolute blast, that was. I had a great laugh on there. Uh, one of the best water rides I think I've ever done, that was, because it just kept laughing and laughing all the way through. Oh, it was brilliant. I loved it. And uh, yeah, it was good timing as well, because I think it's just gone down now. They played an announcement. I think they were up for going on again. Uh, they didn't speak English, but I did ask them and say, you want to go again? And they just kept laughing, and we're like, yeah, yeah. So I think they would have, but yeah, the ride's gone down now, unfortunately. That was so much fun that was. Yes, I'm going to be soaked for the rest of the night now, and it is quite cold here in Orlando, but I have actually got my coat in my bag just here. I've not brought any replacement jeans, but you know what? I don't mind. It's still not too cold for me. Oh, I still can't get over that. Absolutely brilliant. Loved it. Anyway, I'm just walking through Sesame Street land now, and uh, yeah, because it's been quite busy, I've not been around here today. Normally, I come and watch the street party that they do up here, because uh, that is absolutely awesome. But yeah, I don't think there's any more shows of that today, according to the app. Um, but yeah, it's a great area of the park, this is. I still think, I'm st by what I said last time, it would really benefit uh, from a dark ride around here. Something like Sesame Street Street Mission um, at Port Aventura World in Spain. If you've never seen that before, uh, then head over and watch that vlog, because yeah, you can see that. There's also a full uh, POV of the ride here on Theme Park Worldwide. But yeah, that just finished this area off nicely. It's lovely around here, though. I don't think I've ever seen it at night with all the lights on. And yeah, sun's going down, beautiful. Have a little stroll around here. 
But yeah, it's a great area. We've also got the little coaster over at the back. There's a few rides for the kids. Sesame Street themes. Yeah, it's lovely, that sky though. Oh, it is cold though. I'm freezing now, I mean, look at this. Yeah, <laughs> all the way down, and my shoes are soaked, but I don't mind. <laughs> Well, you know me, I'd normally give the coaster a go, but yeah, as you can see, it's got a massive queue all the way around to the side. Busy night here at SeaWorld. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you the ride, just so that you can see it. Of course, been on it many times. I mean, if you check out the vlog from November, um, yeah, we did go on this and have a ride. But yeah, there's a look at it from over there. Shame the fences are so high. Don't remember them being that high around here. That, has that been added on, maybe? I don't remember it looking like that before. But yeah, it's rammed around here, absolutely heaving. Yeah, look at the queue for this over on the left. <laughs> as much as I love going on all the coasters. Yeah, look at this. Massive. Super Grovers, Box Car Derby. Bit of a different sight to Bush Gardens, isn't it? When I was at Bush Gardens, I walked straight on the junior coaster in there, Sesame Street land. Crazy. Oh, with only a five minute wait, it'd be rude not to have a night ride. Right, we're on Mako, let's go. Wow, look at the awesome light in there. Over on cracking out Mako. Go for a night ride on Mako now, so come and join us. Send the beast. Oh. Really cool that screen up there, isn't it? You don't get that on Shambhala. All you got on Shammy V are some lights falling down. There we go. Back row, that's where it's at. Let's go and ride. And we got a dispatch on the back row. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll tell you what, I am loving that colour scheme. They've done a cracking job. Not on my own on the back row, I've been joined by somebody special just off to the right here. I don't think you can see him. There he is. Hello, mate. <laughs> How are you doing? Come for an evening ride. <laughs> just uh, rocked in for a night ride. Why not? There's the moon. That's the beauty of uh, how it passes, though, Brett. You just come and nip him when you want. Exactly. When you've got a coaster this good, you can't resist. Ah, uh, exactly. The good 200 footer, and here we go. You soon get to the top. Woo! Oh, yeah. Woo! Thought Park, that's what we wanted. Beautiful. Oh. oh, an awesome night ride there on Mako. A couple of re-rides as well, because look at this, the park has really filtered out. Just wanted to show you this area at night because it's gorgeous. Earlier on when I said about kind of the theming around Icebreaker, of course, in that vlog, um, you know, it really just sort of looked like this, in my opinion. I can imagine going around the queue line. It shows SeaWorld can do it when it comes to theming. Um, but yeah, of course, Empire of the Penguin. There used to be a trackless dark ride in there. That's now gone. It's just the penguin exhibit. And it used to be quite good. You know, it was a real crowd pleaser. But yeah, look at all this theming. It's a shame they can't just pick it up and move it. Or have built Icebreaker here, you know. I mean, as much as it's nice next to the water, they could have put a queue line down here and kind of utilised all this. But yeah, it's crazy. It's really filtered out tonight. It's cold for these Floridians. When you're British, though, it's still not too bad. <laughs> We're going to have a night ride over on Kraken now. Here we go then, walk on for a night ride on Kraken. 
climbing up the lift hill here, nearly the top now. Got some great views. Fun fact, you can also see Spaceship Earth at Walt Disney World off to the right. Oh, there's Mako going up as well. Oh, look at Mako's light. It's just very subtle again. SeaWorld like their subtle lighting at the coasters. There we go. Wow. Beautiful with the moon there. Woo! Woo! Oh, yes. There's a camera roll. Woo! Oh. oh, that was beautiful. Really nice ride. A little bit chilly tonight, not too bad. For Floridians, it's probably a bit cold, but for me, I thought that was not too bad. It was like, if you've never been to America before, that was kind of like being at Thorpe Park on a September kind of afternoon. Are you weather there? Bit of a comparison for you. Lovely. Well, it's nearly the end of the night now here at SeaWorld Orlando. Great day here as always. And yeah, getting the night rides in on the Beamers. Just going to hopefully get Manta in at the end now. Uh, of course, I'll take you on for another night POV, but to be honest, you're not really going to see a lot because Manta doesn't really have uh, much light and shining at it. However, of course, when I always read the comments, I know you love seeing a good nighttime POV. So I'll, uh, I'll take you on anyway. We'll see what we can see from on there. Uh, probably start it on the lift hill again. Hopefully just get down here in time uh, we've got literally two minutes to go and then uh, yeah wrap up the vlog here from SeaWorld Orlando great to get back really enjoyed it there we go it's a front row our last ride of the night oh she's loving it Whee! be bubble wide on YouTube check it out there we go let's get on a ride oh they're loving it Whee! oh just keep waving that's it keep, keep it going keep it going that's it lovely right let's go and ride here we go last ride of the night front row like I say, you're not really going to see a lot. That audio is great. I don't know how much of that you can see, but that's a pretty nice view. You can see the convention center over there. The wheel over at Icon Park. Woo! Get ready for darkness. Here we go. Woo! Oh, the pretzel! Woo! Oh, oh my God, wow. So intense, that. the back of a Manta. All the uh, equipment for the aquarium down there. Woo! Ah! Woo! Love that near miss with the waterfall. Spectacular. And there we go. End of the night. Brilliant. I don't know how much you saw there from that POV, uh, but yeah, front row ride over on Manta. Fantastic flying coaster uh, to end the night. And yeah, you don't normally hear the words fantastic and flying coaster come out of my mouth. But uh, yeah, I do really like that. Uh, it rides great. And the best thing at the end of the night there, uh, we actually went into the other station. Yeah, which means uh, no stacking on the brake run. I love it. Great day here at SeaWorld. It's been fantastic. Uh, really enjoyed it. Got on all the different rides. Of course, the B&M coasters here are great. It was also really nice to see the retract work taking place. Of course, the testing uh, happening. Uh, 
over on Journey to Atlantis because I love that. Uh, along with that as well, uh, what I've really enjoyed today was talking a little bit about their future investments and of course this planned uh, future coaster which is really exciting for them uh, and seeing what happens with that development. And uh, yeah, of course, getting back on Mako is always a delight. I absolutely love Mako. It's a spectacular B&M coaster, 200 foot. Um, you know, it does exactly what you want from a ride like that. Absolutely amazing. The paint job on Kraken's great. The other work going on, the festival looked great. I've not really had time to see much of that, but uh, yeah, just the overall vibes and atmosphere have been awesome. I think it's a great park. I love the direction and what they're moving in now as well. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing kind of what they, uh, what they do in the future, but uh, there we go. Thanks to you all for a great day. And thank you for joining me on this trip, because of course, that is the final vlog tomorrow. I'm at Chessington World of Adventures. <laughs> so make sure you stay tuned for that vlog coming up here on the channel. Will then be a few more UK vlogs, uh, the opening of Legoland, along with that as well, Alton Towers and a few other bits before uh, then a couple of bonus vlogs from the two fun spot parks here uh, Orlando and Kissimmee as well so stay tuned for those but what an absolutely amazing trip highlight of course Iron Guazi but uh, it has been epic there's a full playlist here on Theme Park Worldwide uh, featuring uh, everything that uh, I've done this trip you know you can see it all there and next week we'll have them two bonus vlogs coming up here on the channel as well but uh, I just want to say a huge thank you so much for all of your support uh, there's been so many comments and reactions on this trip and uh, it's been amazing it really has thank you so much to everyone who uh, has, has commented and liked the videos I really appreciate it and of course reaching that milestone of 300,000 subscribers as well uh, absolutely phenomenal on this trip what a what a place to have that you know uh, but what a place to wrap up as well the entrance that's been refreshed the lighthouse there looking great here at SeaWorld Orlando but so uh, there we go thank you so much everyone for joining me and that leaves me one final thing to say get out there and keep on riding see you in the next video